after round 25, you're going to have 78 stitches. And at this point, we are going to split this top portion of the squid to create the fins and then separate the, the fins from the mantle so we can continue working the mantle around the center. And we're gonna close off the fins here to start shaping that upper part of the squid. So I'm gonna show you how to do that at this point. So what you're gonna do is with your 78 stitches, the breakdown is going to be when you fold this in half, each of the sections of the fins on the side are going to have 19 stitches so 19 stitches on this side and 19 stitches on this side, and then there are gonna be 40 stitches left over for the center. So ultimately when you continue on with the rest of the mantle of the squid going around the middle, it's gonna be rounds of 40 stitches. So this is how we're going to do that. So right where you left off at the end of round 25, what you'll do is you'll count backwards 19 stitches and place a stitch marker there. Okay, continuing in that same direction, you're going to count 20 stitches, and then you're gonna place a stitch marker in the 21st stitch, and that will start marking the other 19 stitch section for the opposite side of the fin. All right, so from where you just counted backwards at 19 stitches, this marks the first fin that will get sewn closed right here. Okay, and continuing in this direction, we're gonna count 20 stitches and then place a stitch marker in the 21st stitch. All right, now including that stitch marker that you just made as being your first stitch of this fin, we're gonna count 19 stitches and place another stitch marker. So again, counting this one, which you placed in that 21st stitch, you're gonna count that as your first one. So one, two. Okay, place a stitch in that ninth stitch. And just to verify that all your counting is right, now this next section should have 20 stitches in it. So all the way up to the end of the round here, make sure you have 20 stitches, not including the stitch marker, 20 stitches in between here. Perfect, okay? So now, as you fold, what you'll see here, as we flip it over, you've got your 19 stitches here and your 19 stitches here, so that's going to fold in half to each other, and that is going to mark where you're gonna sew closed your fins across the bottom. And then again, what you're left in the middle here is 40. You had 20 along the side and 20 along the side. So what you can do at this point is just take these stitch markers and line them up. Go ahead and just take one of them out. And connect these, so I kinda put the one stitch marker through both of them and take this one out. Okay, so including those two stitches and going this direction is gonna be the bottom of that side of the fin. And then you can come over here. That's marking where my loop is. So basically it'll be that last stitch of round 25. We'll get lined up with the 19th stitch and close it up there. So there you have it. So what will end up happening now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, um, a, a length of red thread from our next ball, since you will end up using more than one ball. You can certainly snip this and continue with this thread, but I'm just gonna use a, use a new ball. So you're gonna take a length of thread and you're gonna put it on your tapestry needle. You're gonna be, so basically what you're gonna be doing is from the tip down to where this fin is going to be closed right here, you're going to stitch closed this part of the flap. And then you're gonna do the same on this side. What that does is it allows the middle to remain open so you can stuff that part, but the fins stay flat. And here's the easiest way to do that. What you'll do is you will put a, you will take a piece of scrap yarn and you're actually going to just thread it through from this top part 
all the way down here so you can just give yourself kind of a visual line to follow as you start stitching it closed with red yarn so you don't actually see the stitches. So just take your hook and bring it up underneath where that stitch marker is and pull it through to mark where you're going to end. Okay, so I just pulled that through. You can just let it dangle. And then flatten it nice and evenly. Make sure these edges are lined up perfectly down here. Come straight up to the top and anywhere really close to the top, it's not critical. You know, by the time you seam it closed, it really isn't super critical. You're not gonna need to count any specific place. Go ahead and identify a stitch up on top where you can put your hook through really close to the top there and bring in that other side of this yarn. Pull that through. Okay, and so this way you can see this is the line that I'm going to take my tapestry needle and I'm going to weave it in and out. So it's gonna go through, back through this way, back through this way, again, all the way up along this line going through both layers. And this is how that's gonna happen. So take a length of yarn, red, thread this onto your tapestry needle. And what you'll do is you're gonna start from the top Work your way down and then continue on along these two layers here and seam those closed. Okay, so you kind of do an L shape going down this way, along this way. Okay, so I'm going to bring my dangly part of my yarn out from the inside just so that, that the dangly part is hidden. Okay, I'm going to come out that stitch that I marked. I'm going to pull that in. I am actually going to do my best here to tie off this end with the with the tail of the magic circle so I don't even have to worry about weaving that in. I'm just going to tie that end off. Okay. All right, so here I go. So I'm going to weave it I'm gonna take my thread, I'm gonna go again, kind of right underneath, I'll try to go as best I can, either right alongside or right underneath this thread that I'm marking my, my line. And you're literally gonna be going in and out every single one of these rows. So you'll basically have 25 little tiny stitches that you won't even see, because they're gonna match up perfectly with your stitches that you made. Okay, so I'm going in this side, out that side. Okay, pull it through. All right, and again, now you're flipping it over and you're going back in right underneath the row immediately below it and you're weaving it back out to the front with the corresponding row on the opposite side. Okay, and you're gonna continue in this way all the way down and you're making a barely imperceptible stitch line going all the way down because you're lining them up with each of your stitches. Just made my way down, I'm coming in with my last stitch. So your very last stitch will be right where your stitch marker is. In fact, you can take this, okay. I'm gonna take this out now. It's just kind of in the way under that last stitch. Bring my final stitch right underneath where that stitch marker is. Okay, pull that through. All right, so this is where you've left off your yarn if you're wondering why this dangly stitch marker is there. That's where you're gonna be picking up your other ball of yarn to continue with the mantle. All right, so there you have it. I've stitched all the way down. You can't even tell. It just blends right in. 
So now when you get to the bottom of the fin, you're going to just continue straight along with that thread and you're just gonna close it up, close this part up. And the way you're going to do that is simply line up those stitches and you're gonna be going under both loops, under both layers, back and forth with your tapestry needle like this. Don't pull too tight or it kind of puckers it up and then just bring it back under the next two, back and forth all the way to the end. And there you have it. So now you can just bring this to the inside. You can tie it off and bring it to the inside. And there you have one fin closed. So then when you come back and stuff the mantle, this part stays flat. This will become more defined as you come and stuff it like this. And this part will be the same on this opposite side and you'll have your little fins. So you're gonna do that on the opposite side. So use your little thread again and your imaginary line from your stitch marker down here all the way to the top. Thread it closed and then you will come back and you will pick up right where you left off here with your original yarn and you'll continue with your 40 stitches around and around and around to continue with the mantle. Now you have finished the fins. So now what you'll see on the bottom is this part of the mantle which you will stuff in just a little while and your fins are all closed up. Yep. So then what you're going to do is you're simply going to pick up where you left this off before you went and did all that fin business and just pick her right up here and continue on with the mantle along. So as you come along these 20 stitches, you'll keep going as if you're just right in a circle and you'll skip straight over to these 20 stitches and continue on and on. So you've just finished up the main part of the mantle and this is going to bring you all the way down to round 48. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a row of half double crochet through the front loop only so we can create that little flap that covers kind of where his eyes go. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So picking up right where you left off. What we're going to do is we're going to actually close this round of single crochet because our next round is going to be half double crochet and we want to bring it up to the right height. So just go ahead and make a slip stitch in that very next stitch and chain one. That chain doesn't count as anything. And what we're going to do is we're going to be going through the front loop only of each stitch as we make our half double crochets. So this is what that is going to look like. Beginning right where you just made your slip stitch in that same stitch, go ahead and make a half double crochet through the front loop only. So this one right here. Yarn over, pull up, and complete that half double crochet. Okay, you're simply gonna do one half double crochet through the front loop only all the way around. So you'll end up with 40 half double crochets at the end of this row. All right, I'm coming around to the end of row 49 with my half double crochets. I can make my last one here. And there you have it. Okay, so that's just gonna make that little ridge that's gonna go kind of transition from the main part of the mantle over to his little area, this, the little portion here where his eyes end up going. So now I'm gonna show you how to transition to the next round. So what you'll see here is since you worked through the front loops only, in the back behind that, you'll see a whole little ridge of rows. These are those, the, or of loops rather. These are those back loops of round 48 that you didn't use. So for round 50, that's where you're gonna be working in. You're gonna be working single crochets through those back loops of round 48. So here's how you get there. So after row 49, after your row of half double crochets, what you're gonna do is you're not gonna slip stitch to close or anything. You're going to just kind of pull your loop out a little bit and remove your hook. 
Then what we want to do is we want to bring this hoop or we want to bring this loop to the inside so we can start working those stitches for the next round. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your hook backwards to forwards under the, the two loops of that very first half double crochet that you made of that round. And you're going to snatch that loop. So just bring that loop over your hook and you're going to tighten down a little bit to make it, you know, a normal stitch um, size, stitch tension. And you're going to pull that loop to the back like this. Okay. And then you're going to do a chain one. So all you have to do is just going to grab that yarn and chain one. And now you are ready to begin your next row on the inside. So you are going to place one single crochet through those back loops only all the way around. So it's this loop right here, single crochet, okay? Just like that through these loops. There we go. That's what it's going to look like after round 50. So you'll have your kind of row of half double crochet on top and then you will begin your next section of single crochet right behind that. So we have finished the mantle and we've put in the eyes and now we are going to split this round for the tentacles. So you should have 40 stitches in this round. You'll want to make sure to count just to be sure. And pick up right where we left off. We're going to make eight arms. I should call them arms actually is the technical term. And then the tentacles are the two long ones in the middle. And each arm is going to have a section of five stitches. So there'll be eight of them again going around. So what you'll be doing is you'll be starting straight away and you're going to chain for your first arm. You'll work your way back down the chain and then you'll place five single crochet along the row here. Make another chain, work down the chain, five more single crochet. You'll do that eight times. So you'll have eight arms at the end of this round. So here we go. I'll do one of them with you so that you can see how that's going to work. So go ahead and again, right straight off from the very last stitch that you made in your last round, you're going to make your chain for the first tentacle. All right, so I've completed my chain. Now I'm gonna be working in the back bumps as I go back down this chain. We're gonna start from that very first back bump. You're not going to skip anything. You're gonna start in that very first back bump with a single crochet. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is place a stitch marker in that single crochet. so you can match up the, um, the suction cups as you come back around. I am a fan of stitch markers and I actually place a stitch marker in that first single crochet and in that last chain that I made. So what that represents is the top of your chain and the top of your row of your single crochet. So your single crochet row and the top of your chain, your chain row is gonna have the same number of stitches as you join the bottom of the, um, the squid with the tentacles. So I made my single crochet in that very first bump and now I am simply gonna make one single crochet in the back bump of this chain all the way back down. All right, I have made it down to the bottom of my chain. So I'm back down to the last round on the squid. 
So I'm going to place five single crochet. I'm coming in hot with some more stitch markers. I like to mark that, mark that first and that last single crochet of that five section. So the first single crochet and the fifth single crochet with more stitch markers. And again, the reason why I do that is it's really, it makes joining the top part of the squid to the tentacles or to the suction cups way, way easier and quicker. It's super easy just to line up these along with these same places that are marked on the um, on the base where the suction cups are and uh, sew them together. All right, so here I am again and I am going to start straight away again on my next chain for my next tentacle and I'm going to repeat this process over again eight times. You're gonna end up back to this stitch and you're gonna slip stitch that one and tie it off. Let's make the tentacle portion of one of these center arms together because there's a lot going on in this one chain. So I'm just gonna do it with you in case you need help with that. So go ahead and slip knot onto your hook. And begin with a chain of 46. Forty six. All right. So we're going to be working in the back bumps of this chain, which is pretty important because you are going to come around and um, attach the top portion of the arm with this one. So you're going to need um, these loops over here when you do that. So we're going to be working through the back bumps beginning in the second back bump from the hook. We're going to place a single crochet. And we're going to single crochet in the next one as well. In the next back bump, we're gonna place a bobble. We're gonna make a suction cup. So yarn over and insert under that back bump. Yarn over and pull up. And do that two more times into that same back bump of that chain. So you've done that three times. Now you're gonna yarn over and pull through all of those loops on your hook. In the next two back bumps, we're gonna place a single crochet. So as you make this next single crochet, you're gonna pop that bobble towards you. So just make sure you're pushing that up towards you, complete that single crochet, and go ahead and make another single crochet. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place another bobble and then another two single crochets. Another bobble, another two single crochets. So you're gonna make that bobble plus two single crochet combo 12 times. So that was one. So continue working down your chain and you're going to end up with 12 bobbles and then you'll have two more single crochets after your final bobble. So go ahead and get to that and I will meet you at that point. All right, I just completed my last bobble and the two single crochets that follow it. So this is what my arm is looking like, or my tentacle, I should say, is looking like. Got all my bobbles, 12 of them. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this little flare at the bottom of the tentacle. And this is how we're going to do that. In the next two back bumps, we're gonna place a half double crochet. So one half double crochet here, one half double crochet here. One, and then in this next one. Okay, in the next three chains, we're gonna be placing double crochets. So three double crochets along the chain. One. Two. Three. In this next chain, we're gonna place one half double crochet And in the last chain, we're gonna place two single crochets. 
And we're placing two because we're gonna round the bend here and we're actually gonna work a few stitches on the opposite side of this chain as well. So you need to add a little bit of length there. So that brings you kind of up to a tip. So now working on this other side of the chain, okay, you're gonna skip over your little slip knot there and you're gonna work one single crochet in this next stitch. And we're mirroring this opposite side. So the next stitch will be a half double crochet on the other side of the chain there. Now three double crochets. One. Two. Three, two half double crochets. Okay, and then we're going to finish up with a single crochet. And there you have made the little tip. Okay, so now we're gonna do is we're gonna do an invisible fasten and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So what you're gonna do in this next stitch, which is a single crochet on the opposite side of your chain there, is you're gonna do a slip stitch into the, just the back loop only. So we're gonna, I'm actually gonna snip first. So snip and leave about, you know, four inches of yarn. And to do your invisible fasten, you're gonna place your hook as if you were gonna uh, fasten off with a slip stitch in this next one, but you're gonna do it in the back loop only. So bring your hook through the back loop only of that next stitch and yarn over and complete a slip stitch. Okay, and pull that end all the way through. All right, now grab your tapestry needle. Okay, thread your needle and this is how you do your invisible fasten. Find your next stitch and you're gonna place your tapestry needle under both loops of that next stitch. Pull that through. Now coming back where you just did your last stitch, your previous stitch, you're gonna bring that back across and you're actually gonna place your tapestry needle through the back loop only of that previous stitch. And you're gonna pull your yarn through. And that brings it to the back. It closes it up, mirroring what your stitches already look like. It doesn't leave you with any awkward bump. And then later as you come back around and you're attaching this to the top part of this tentacle, it'll be really nice and clean. So I just kind of, at this point, just weave that in on the back. This is gonna be on the underside of your tentacle, so it doesn't need to be anything fancy. Just weave it in so it stays secure. And snip it off. And at this point, go ahead and weave in this thread as well. So you're just left with a nice clean base part of your center tentacle. Okay, so I just weaved in that last part, all right? So now you are well on your way to making the top part of this center arm as well. So what, what you're gonna do is you're gonna chain the same amount of chains, and instead of bobbling your way back down the chain, you're simply gonna be doing single crochets. So that part will go a lot faster. And then the end, these last seven stitches of your chain will be exactly the same. So you're gonna end up with a red or whatever color for the top. Um, that's gonna look exactly like this, except for this is just gonna be flat with single crochets rather than bobbles. And then you're gonna place them against each other and single crochet them together. When you're ready to crochet the top and the tentacle portion of these arms together, go ahead and stitch them, or go ahead and stitch mark them together. So grab some stitch markers. I have or had um, found the top middle stitch of the single crochet 
increase, which would have been that second single crochet of the single crochet increase, which is the very tip of each of these. And with the wrong sides facing, so you're gonna have your bubbles on the outside, and then the wrong side of the other portion. This guy's very curly. And the tips. Remember you've had a turning chain on this one, so don't let that one confuse you. Don't need to pay attention to that turning chain. I just like to match up the, t the tips. So these two stitches on each side of the chain and then on this opposite side as well. Don't be concerned if the bubble portion of this is a tighter tension. It probably will be because you had a lot going on with that chain with the bobbles and so it tightened up the stitches a little bit. So your top part might feel like it's a little bit longer at this point or as you're going along it might be a little more difficult to um, connect through these ones but no biggie. All right and so then down to this side so you can already tell this one's like the red looks a little bit longer but we work out. Take this one out. And match those tip ones up. So this is the important stitches. So they should match up perfectly. Okay, so what you're gonna do is with the red on top, you're gonna rejoin your yarn and you're gonna place one single crochet under each stitch combining the two together. So it'll be through this side and then through this side. Okay, I'm gonna start where my stitch marker is, but this will be my second stitch. And I'm simply gonna single crochet my way all the way along. And then when you get to this top part that is flared, that we did our half double crochets and our doubles, we're gonna mirror it again. So when you get down here, you're gonna have, not including this very tip one, you're gonna have seven stitches here where you're gonna be doing two half doubles, three doubles, a half double, and a single. And then in this tip one, you're gonna actually do another increase. You're gonna do two single crochets, and then you're gonna mirror it on this side as well. So follow the written pattern, but I just wanted to give you a visual of what that's gonna look like as you sew these, or as you seam these together with your single crochet. So let's see what that's gonna look like. When you add your yarn back to crochet these together, leave a long starting tail, and this is what you'll use to actually sew the arm onto the base part of your um, of your tentacles onto this part. So I've got this part done with all my bobbles on my tentacles, and you're going to be crocheting these. Um, you're going to be sewing these on to this part before you actually sew it onto the bottom of the squid. Okay, so with the red side on top, I'm going to put my hook in under those two stitches. Complete a single crochet, and then I'm gonna do that all the way down, lining up both sides together. all the way down to the flared portion, and then I'll do that part with you. All right, here I am at my last seven stitches of this flared part, again, not counting this very tip one. And so we're going to flare this out even more in the same pattern. So these next two stitches, as I combine these together, crochet these together, are going to be a half double crochet. So one, and two. My next three are gonna be double crochets. One, two, three. We've got a half double crochet next and a single. Okay, I'm gonna take out this uh, stitch marker. I'm gonna place two single crochets in the tip here. 
one, two. And now mirroring this on the opposite side, this next is gonna be a single crochet, half double, three double crochet, one, two, three. This next two are a half double, Okay, and for the rest of it, you're simply going to place one single crochet all the way back up the other side, continuing to join these two pieces together. All right, I'm placing my last stitch, joining these two pieces of the arm together. And there you have it. So go ahead and just fasten that part off. Again, leave kind of a longish tail because you're gonna use that to sew it onto the base part of the squid center part. Let me scroll out a little bit. There you have it. I kind of shake my I'm gonna show you how I attach this center tentacle to the base of your squid before you sew the rest of it together. What you do is take your two long tails, okay, locate rounds three and four. So there's one, two, three, four. So right in between here in the middle is where you're going to pull through those yarn tails so that you can sew this on. So take your hook, Bring it up through a stitch. I've already got one on here, so I want to make my other one symmetrical. Okay, and with the tentacle part facing inward, so it's going to go on like this, pull a yarn tail through to the back. And then just count a couple stitches over and you're gonna do the same thing with this other one, this other yarn tail and pull it also through to the back. So pop your hook up again between three and four, a couple stitches down that row and pull back this yarn tail to the back. And I'll just show you if it's sufficient enough for you, you're certainly welcome to just tie this off in a knot right here. If it's decorative or it's not gonna be used by any rambunctious kids, <laughs> you can just tie this on and that will be just fine. Now for me, I'm making these toys for my kids so I need this to be super secure. So I will thread this onto my tapestry needle and I'm actually gonna weave this back and forth a couple times through this round. So I'm gonna bring my tapestry needle back down under this next stitch in that same round. I'm gonna come around the other side and I'm actually gonna snatch a couple loops from this leg on this side. I'm gonna pull that through. And then I'm going to bring it back through that round to the back side again. Under the next stitch over. See how I did that? So I just secured that a little bit tighter on. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this, this uh, yarn tail. Okay, 
Okay. And then I'm going to tie that off and knot it off. So now I have this laying nice and flat. It's super secure. Anybody can just yank on that and it's not going to stretch or come off at all. It is finally time to join the upper piece with the lower piece of this little guy. So here's what you're going to do. You've placed lots of stitch markers along the, um, the tentacles. And so what you'll do is you will take any five stitch section and line those stitch markers up like so. And you'll find that your tentacles will line up with each other. And then your next five stitch section, again, where your stitch markers are should line up with each other. If you want, you can actually take out these stitch markers and put one in to join the whole piece. Now, as you crochet along, you'll wanna stop and finish stuffing the squid, right? You know, when you have a couple tentacles left, just make sure you finish stuffing and making sure it's nice and firm and looking like how you want it to look, all right? So I'm just gonna give you a quick example here. So somewhere, anywhere, you're going to, again, line up this five stitch section Take out the stitch markers in that place and put your hook in both sides like this and rejoin your red yarn. I'm just gonna bring it in with a slip stitch and then place a single crochet in that same place that I'm rejoining here. Okay, so there it is rejoined. Okay, and now I'm going to place a single crochet into that same spot. I'm gonna mark that, that's my first stitch, it's just a habit. Okay, and you are simply going to do that all the way around. So you're gonna single crochet, you'll have five stitches in between each of the tentacles. You'll just take these stitch markers out as you go along. So it's just kind of a reminder, it's just an easy way to match up, make sure all your stitches are matching up so you don't have to count over and over again. So I don't think you need to watch me simply crochet all the way around, but I am gonna make one little caveat for you here just to take note, is as you make your way up your tentacles, stitching these together, you're gonna to come to the tip, and when you get to this little tip one, you're gonna place two single crochets in that one. And that just allows a little bit more length on the tip so that it doesn't curl over if you only place one single crochet and then make around the bend. So place two single crochets in that stitch every time you go around to the tip of the tentacle. Anywhere across those two tip stitches is fine to place your increase. So that is pretty much all you need to know. So I'm just gonna continue to make my way up along my first tentacle here, back down, placing one single crochet in each of these two sides, on and on and on, bringing this guy together. If this video was helpful for you, please click the like button below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to sign up on my website, offthebeatenhook.com, so we can keep in touch and where you'll be the first to know about new patterns, resources, and video tutorials. See you next time.